turn that alarm off. I don't want to get up. Wait, my training. This is what my training was for. Let's do a little force pull. Howdy there. Welcome to uh, Return to Inputs On, starring yours truly, Chester. Chuckles. Chester Chuckles. The last name's, it's like Chuckles. So today we will be talking about Jedi Fallen Order. But in case you're new here, I have to remind you, the Inputs On or reviews are either five to 10 minutes in length and aim to tell you everything you need to know about the game, whether you want to purchase it or not. There will not be a score at the end of this review. So I'm going to talk about myself because, well, there's no one else to talk to you right now. I discovered a few alternative ways to watch shows through a service that are called premium subscription services. The first show I pirated, <clears throat> the first show that I watched was called Shameless. It told the story of the Gallagher and how they're basically all screwed up in a very beautiful way. A show that had a great cast of adult actors, but the kids really held that show together. Even the baby that couldn't talk was acting like a boss. Thus, we see Cameron Monaghan and what many would say was his big break into the mainstream. Which is why, when the trailer dropped for Jedi Fallen Order, it was revealed that Cal would be played by Cameron. I could not be any happier to see what he would do with the role. Now, once again, if you've never seen the show, I expected Cal to be cussing up a storm just like he was in Shameless, but he really carries a character in an honest way and makes him a believable part of the Star Wars universe the complete opposite of the kind of character he played in Shameless, <laughs> even though he is technically non-existent in the canon, but that's okay. Part 1B, Sony Santa Monica loses Stig Amundsen. So let's go back to the gameplay for a little bit. Picture this, the God of War series came out in circa 2000 this time, and we were all probably this old. And at that time, we don't necessarily give a care about who's making these games. We, sh we sh probably should now we realize that. So that's why Stig Amundsen bounces into the picture. For Stig um, Amundsen, Amundsen, forgive me for butchering your name. People do it to me all the time. He's been working on the God of War series since the very start. He worked as a lead environment artist, an art director, a game director for God of War 3 after Corey Balrog's departure. And after the first eight months of development for the other opportunities, what that, that's another story though. So if my memory serves me correctly, this is a portion of the God of War fan base that felt Kratos' recent end of his gimmick. Still, this is one of the highly anticipated games of 2010, so Stig, being the balls of steel man that he is, decided to dig deep and make a good game, which meant taking the helm of the franchise and dealing with whatever repercussions will be there. And you know, not like gamers freak out over bad games that they're long and tailed franchises that have been around for such a long time that people get mad because it's like mediocre or anything like that. So Stig, who took the helm of the franchise and with a lot of hype behind it, did a damn good job of shutting down the idea of a cooperative mode for some reason, which I don't understand why you would want to run around with two Kratoses just all yelling and not that uh, cooperative mode. He's already a favorite of my books with that. So after the success, Stig decided to fly on his own and leave the nest that helped raise him to be a god of war and eventually landed at Respawn Studios in 2014. Leading a new project as a game director, which later in 2016 was revealed as a Star Wars game. His team included Aaron Contreras, a narrative designer on Mario... <laughs> His team included Aaron Contreras, a narrative designer on Mafia 3, which who he led the game's narrative team, which included Chris Avalone and four of the writers. The studio collaborated with Lucasfilms to create new characters and locations, to expand the universe, so to say. With veteran Star Wars composers Gordy Hopp and Stephen Barton, they are composers for the score after previously working on titles like Star Wars The Old Republic, and Star Wars Battlefront, and even the Titanfall series, and Apex Legends. So you begin to notice this trend of Respawn having a very strong in-house team and able to just put out great games with great composition and great narrative designs within the house without having to go out of the team or outside of the family to put out great products. Part two, the game introduction and feeling. The title screen for the game felt like the opening cutscene. So I thought I was already into the game, but really it was just going to the screen. I was saying, oh, main menu. 
So when you get into the actual game, it's fun to immediately figure out that Cal is not necessarily a troublemaker, but a very athletic, hardworking, possibly homeless, but his coworkers still like him for whoever he is. Even if he steals your food outside the fridge, Adam, I know you're watching this. We don't like slide mechanics also, by the way, you might not like this game because there's a lot of sliding in this game. But back to the point, overall, the first star of the game is Cal revealing that he is a Jedi and that the Sisters of the Ninth want to finish the job that they started. So they interrogate the workers at the construction zone. But luckily our trusty journey mates in the form of Seer and Greaser arrive to save our force sensitive asses. Also, there's no point in questioning shit like this. Remember, everyone is a little force sensitive, but destiny and threats of fate tie us all together. The Matrix. Cal is shown a hologram where he has shown the road map for the game. You go where you want, and there are some obstacles that require some training for Cal to advance. But it's cool to get a preview where you'll go in the future, or maybe you'll find some upgrades pretty early. But nonetheless, there is a strict linear path that you will have to follow. The game rewards the curious with not only different outfits, but with some awesome scenery, Easter eggs, and some fun conversations between Cal and BD1, his robot companion for the game. Part three, exploration. Cal will be pushed in the right direction through exploration, and I felt it was also influenced by the universe that it takes place in. If this place was called Googly Moogly Space World, I probably would just have went straight to the objective instead of trying to play with the little creatures that are running around the field and getting used to my environments. So slap on your favorite poncho and prepare to find a few things on your nomadic journey. A force echo gives EXP, which is experience, EXP. In essence, will increase your max health or max force meter once you find the appropriate amount. And finally, once you climb those great heights or go to those dark depths, you will find one of the greatest things of all. A new poncho. Or a ship cosmetic design. Okay, honestly, these are not the things I really wanted to find after trying to explore and getting lost while backtracking to the ship. So it's kind of hard for me to be happy about, oh look, a different colored poncho, when I honestly feel his starting gear looked cool enough and differentiated him from the universe at just being Cal. Plus, exploring the world would have felt a little more feasible if the map was easier to read. Yep, there are multiple layers on the map on these planets, but backtracking to the Stingler Mantis and not knowing if I should be on the upper or mid layer of the level started happening way, 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 way too often. And oh, the backtracking. In a game where the second sister straight up teleports to places, I found it annoying how much Cal had to walk back to a ship after a groundbreaking story event would happen. Then he would have to walk all the way back, kind of killing the atmosphere created in the cutscene. Besides my real life laziness taking over, Respawn did a darn good job with Dathomir. I was sweaty when I finished that portion of the game due to every single thing trying to kill me and actually making me feel like I was in this hybrid Amazonian location and the danger depths of space. Part four, the combat. I honestly don't have too much to say about the combat. It feels similar to a lot of action games, action RPG games where you have your one, two, three combos. You can parry, which is a common thing now. Uh, and I didn't find the need to necessarily learn anything else on the skill tree. I just wanted to put it all into my, sh basically doing more damage with the lightsaber points rather than focusing on what some may call flippy shit. Also, it didn't help that Cal can just automatically deflect uh, lasers from the beginning. So there's a few moments in time where I was just running around like a chicken cut off. It's going like this, reflecting lasers, whatever I wanted. So, so it definitely, definitely is not a button masher because you get punished trying to do that with enemies surrounding you at different times. So it helps being able to be rewarded for adapting to the arena and the different type of enemy types that come at you, whether they're heavies, uh, long distance, snipers, or anything like that. What can I say? Cal knows he has someone watching, but for me, I wanted high health and maximum saber damage once again. So deflecting lasers already made me feel like I had certain control on the pace of combat and I felt outnumbered, but I never felt overpowered or OP, as the kids say. Add your words or less. This was a fantastic game that deserves a squeakle of equal stature, but with a little more power. Oh no, I'm not saying that. This was a fantastic game that deserves a sequel of equal stature, but with a little more polish. Being able to parry and explore felt like it was a futuristic Indiana Jones, but with a coherent team of likable allies. 
I'm not talking about short round. Short round's awesome. The story felt like flowed and went by pretty swiftly for a game that felt like it was almost, what, 12 to 15 hours long? For the sequel, I hope for less cosmetic choices and more power, maybe stat attributed rewards. I don't need over 30 different colors for my ship and for Cal and for BD1. I mean, they honestly did a great job on how they look originally. So I want to give this game a good out of good. Force ball. Don't put anything perverted here. Huh?